Hey guys, it is Miss Serino. If you are returning to the channel, welcome back. And if you're brand new, I am so excited that you decided to join me here today for another video. And we're in Create a Sim today with a family that I've already kind of sort of made. If you have not seen in the past couple of weeks, I have been going into Create a Sim and recreating Sims from The Sims 2, the iconic families that we know, love, and possibly hate. <laughs> and I have been having so much freaking fun. Now, I've had a lot of questions about if these Sims are going to be available to download and play with, and my answer is yes. However, it has taken me some time to grab all of the CC that I used to be able to kind of like package all of these families and do that stuff. I don't quite yet know, even as I'm making this video, if I'm going to zip the actual tray files for the family together and then also include the CC in that zip file, or if I'm just going to list out all of the custom content that I used and then put them up on the gallery for you all to download, um, if you would like. I understand that of course console players cannot uh, fully access these sims because they do use custom content and for that I am sorry, but it was necessary to bring some of these sims to life even though I kept the custom content fairly light. So there is still a possibility that you could go ahead and use hairs specifically, for example, that we have in game to kind of match what these Sims looked like in The Sims 2. But I have rambled enough. So let's take a look at these Sims. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each Sim, list off the custom content that I used, and then kind of do a comparison between The Sims 2 and The Sims 4, because I went a digging for some information. So the very first Sim in the Pleasant family, which is who we were looking at, uh, we have Mary Sue. This is mom. She is married to Daniel Pleasant. And now Mary Sue in The Sims 2, she is the daughter of Herb and Coral Oldie. She was actually adopted. There's kind of the thought that perhaps they tried for a baby and they were unable to conceive. So they adopted Mary Sue. In The Sims 2, she had black hair, brown eyes, which is exactly what I tried to emulate here as well. She was a Gemini. Now, what I've noticed in The Sims 2 is that a lot of the astrological signs that The Sims are assigned do not necessarily match the personality and traits that they were given in the game. Some of them do, some of them don't. Mary Sue is not an exception to that. Her aspiration, or not aspiration, I'm sorry, her astrological sign doesn't really align with her personality, which is not what I remembered. Like, I, I just didn't remember this. So she's neither sloppy nor neat. She's kind of somewhere in the middle. She's outgoing. She's kind of active, but she's pretty serious and pretty grouchy, actually. And she has the fortune aspiration. She's an intern in the political career. Um, yeah, it's, it's not exactly how I imagined her in The Sims 2, nor what I remember when I played in The Sims 2 at all. And now Mary Sue was actually recreated in The Sims 4 in February of 2019, along with the rest of her family to celebrate the 19th anniversary of The Sims. Um, in the recreated version, she is a perfectionist, she is good and a romantic, and she has the leader of the pack aspiration, which also makes her gregarious. Now, considering her traits in The Sims 2, I'm not, I'm not sold on her personality in The Sims 4, actually. I wouldn't, think of her as a romantic sim. There was nothing really in her personality in The Sims 2 that made her romantic. So I'm gonna make that change. I think she's good, which unfortunately means she can't be mean. She's kind of grouchy and I don't really know what would equate to grouchy, but I think for the, oh, I think what I'm gonna do, because if you all did not know, um, we'll get to Daniel Pleasant in just a second here. Um, but Daniel Pleasant, is absolutely having an affair in The Sims 2 with the maid, Kaylin. Yes, he is in love with her as well, by the way. He is in love with her. So I'm gonna make Mary Sue jealous because I, I think that's pretty accurate. Now, leader of the pack is kind of interesting too. I think I might try to look for a different aspiration, though there may not really be one specific to like the political career. I think the closest I could get would just be like city native, which isn't, ex which isn't exactly what I'd be going for. Perhaps I could go for something like, I was gonna say love, but I don't even think that. Not creativity, family, food, knowledge. Yeah, there really isn't too much that would align with that. So maybe I'll just keep that. I don't see her as wanting to be the leader of the pack, but perhaps we could translate that to being lead in politics. We could also do friend of the world, but 
I, I think we're gonna just keep it as is. Now, if we were gonna be looking at Mary Sue's interests, her preferences, if you will, there are some things in The Sims 2, this was unique to The Sims 2 in comparison to The Sims 4, is there were interest points. So there were particular things that your Sims had interest in. However, this in The Sims 4 is more so about conversation topics. There are activities and things like that that translate into The Sims. And there are also characteristics, but in The Sims 2 it was like certain hobbies. So they could be really interested in sports or sci-fi or fashion and culture and stuff like that. It doesn't exactly translate into The Sims 4. So I might pick preferences for these Sims before I make them available to you all, but I also might not. Now, Mary Sue does have some custom content. The main piece of custom content is this hair by Sim Celebrity 00. This is the Anne hairstyle in style two specifically. It'll be linked down below. Whether or not I package it in and make these sims available that way, it'll definitely be linked down below no matter what. And it's just a low bun. There are a couple of hairs in game with various packs, or even I believe there's one in base game that could be very close to this if you were looking for an alternative that wasn't custom content. Now, of course, my sims by default always have a few pieces of custom content in the skin detail category. So I am using a swatch of the Pufferfish Skin Blend by Miss Ruby Bird, as I always do. I've got the mouth corners by Miko, just to kind of add little, little dents there. And I am also using Spotlight Version 2 by Simandi on my Sim as well, creating this kind of like detail and shadow effect. It's less harsh uh, with Mary Sue's skin tone, so that is wonderful. And then I've got EA eyelashes. The very last thing that I have on Mary Sue is the Madison Lipstick by Cryptic Sim. I know I went through that really, really quickly, but these are items, if you've watched my How I Make My Sims or How I Create Sims videos, I have all of these linked and I go a lot slower. So if you're looking for something like that on How I Make My Sims, definitely check out those videos as well. Next up, we have good old Daniel Pleasant. I'm not the biggest fan of Daniel, to be honest with you, because I don't like cheaters. I don't like them. And he is having an active affair with the maid, as I mentioned, Kaylin. I believe when you jump into the household in The Sims 2, there's gonna be prompts and everything. I think he may have just invited over Kaylin or she just started her shift. I don't remember, but <laughs> someone's gonna get caught cheating and someone's gonna get mad at some point. It's fantastic. I, I love the chaos of The Sims 2. So um, Daniel is the son of Jeff and Diane Pleasant. Now they are deceased, unlike uh, Mary Sue's parents. Her parents are actually available in The Sims 2 for you to play if you would like to, but Daniel's, uh, Daniel's parents are deceased. He has red hair and green eyes, as you can see here, which I absolutely brought through to The Sims 4. Now he is a Virgo and he has the romance aspiration in The Sims 2. He's also an assistant coach in the athletic career. He's fairly neat. He's very shy, which I think is interesting considering he's having an affair, but maybe the convenience of having Kaylin as the maid in their household made it a bit easier for him. I don't know. He's pretty active and he's fairly serious, but he's pretty nice. So in comparison to Mary Sue, who's like pretty serious and pretty grouchy, he's very nice and shy and honestly a bit of a romantic. So they may not be the best match. I don't know. Um, now, in The Sims 4, again, he was recreated in February of 2019 for the 19th anniversary, and he is romantic, which makes perfect sense. That translates to me. The non-committal component, I think, is interesting. You know, I don't remember the romance aspiration in The Sims 2 verbatim. Like, I don't remember all of the steps or what those desires were, but he also has the romantic, or the serial romantic, I'm sorry, aspiration in The Sims 4 by default. And last but not least, he's outgoing, which he's really shy. So I think this is actually, oh, Daniel. <laughs> I think this is actually a contrast to the Daniel Pleasant in The Sims 2. So I'm gonna get rid of outgoing and I'm actually gonna make him socially awkward. I think at the time we didn't have this trait, but I feel like socially awkward would kind of sort of match with being shy because I don't wanna make him a loner. It's not like he just enjoys being by himself. He's just a little awkward and difficult for him to kind of form those relationships. So I'm gonna make him socially awkward, romantic. And the only other thing is the non-committal component, which I don't, I don't know if he's non-committal. I think he just 
wants love and maybe he doesn't know what it looks like. I'm getting really deep with this because I just love the lore with The Sims 2 and trying to translate it to The Sims 4 can sometimes be challenging. You have to you have to kind of think outside the box. So again, he is yeah, he's neat, fairly neat. He's shy, he's active. Maybe I'll make him active because again, he's in the athletic career as well in The Sims 2. So I'm going to make him active. And don't worry, I just have um some create a sim poses for the active trait. <laughs> Uh, that's why he started posing. Now, again, we do have some more aspirations under the love category now with the Lovestruck expansion. So maybe he's more of a romantic explorer or a paragon partner. Maybe he wants to have successful relationships with two or more Sims. Because I looked at, this is another component actually, I looked at his memories from The Sims 2 because there was a memory system and falling in love with Kaylin was a positive memory for him. And he's still actively in love with Mary Sue. So maybe he just, maybe he wants more than one partner. Maybe that's his goal. So that's, that's how I'm going to kind of frame Daniel, I think, for The Sims 4. Now he is only using those skin detail defaults that I noted for Mary Sue. Again, I put them on every single Sim that I make. Other than that, he has a hair from Get to Work, and he has a base game facial hair, which makes him very, very easy, I think, um, to, to kind of maintain the look that he has here as well. As for their outfits, now I didn't do any kind of pack restriction as I created these Sims. I just tried to make them look as close to the Sims 2 versions as I possibly could. So I'm not going to go into all of the packs that I use for their outfits. But also I should say I only made their everyday outfits so I could kind of model them from The Sims 2 and go from there. Before I make them available, I'm going to assign all other outfit categories, but I know it would take so long to do on cam with you all, so I'm gonna do it on my own. Next up, we have Angela Pleasant. Now she is of course the daughter, one of the daughters of Mary Sue and Daniel, and her twin sister is Lilith, who we will be seeing at the very, very end here. Now in The Sims 2, she does of course have red hair and green eyes. So both Lilith and Angela inherited uh, their dad's genes, which I think is a bit odd considering that black hair and brown eyes, those are very dominant. Uh, genes and genetic components. So the girls turning out with red hair and green eyes, just like Daniel, I don't think that would really happen. I think the odds would be extremely low, but nevertheless. <laughs> Angela is an Aquarius in The Sims 2. She has the popularity aspiration. And I forgot about this. She's dating Dustin Broke. Now I did make the Broke family as well. So maybe I'll do a video on them next, but she's dating Dustin Broke, who I always, I've always loved. She's kind of sloppy, she's pretty shy, kind of like her dad. She's very active and playful, but she's neither grouchy nor nice. She's somewhere in the middle. And in The Sims 2, she is enemies with her sister Lilith. They are not friendly at all. They, they are enemies, they are at each other's throats and they are very, very different. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting. So, as I mentioned earlier, Mary Sue and Daniel were recreated in February of 2019 for The Sims 4. And so were Angela and Lilith. But we have two versions of Angela and Lilith for The Sims 4. Now that recreated version in February of 2019, they were made available on the gallery and they were of course created by Maxis. However, the other version of Angela and Lilith specifically shipped with the Discover University expansion pack in which they are young adults, not teens. They're living together and they are attending rivaling universities, Brightchester and Foxbury. And they're acquaintances, so they don't hate each other. Um, they're living together, hate e don't hate each other, and are attending university. And Angela and Mary, or I'm sorry, Daniel and Mary Sue do not exist um, in the version that came with Discover University. So there's technically two versions of them available for The Sims 4. I didn't realize that. I, I had no idea. Uh, but anyway, in The Sims 4, specifically the Discover University version, as a young adult, she is a foodie neat. She is good. She has the painter aspiration, which makes her a muser, and she's majoring in art history at Brightchester. Again, she is acquaintances with her sister Lilith and lives with her. Now, I don't know why I did this. Maybe I wasn't really thinking through this. I, I did take the foodie trait from the Sims 4 DU version, but kind of looking at the Sims 2 version of Angela Pleasant, I, I don't quite know. I I would say that she's probably, 
I don't know. I don't want to follow what they what they did for the Sims 4 version for Discovery University because I don't know if it exactly fits because she's kind of sloppy. So she's not neat. I didn't give her that trait. And she wanted to be a painter in the Sims 4 version. Now, if we were to look at Angela's interest for The Sims 2, I, I don't know what we'd find. I forgot to kind of look, but I'm going to say that she's loyal. And what I did is I took the route of Big Happy Family because I feel like Angela, she doesn't like her sister Lilith, right? Lilith is a troublemaker and maybe Angela is well aware that her dad is having an affair. Like this family is dysfunctional, okay? They just are. And maybe Angela... Angelic Angela wants to have a big happy family when she gets older. She wants the complete opposite of what she feels she has right now within her family. So I'm going to keep big happy family, but if I make any changes, they will of course be reflected when this download of the family is available to you all. I also wanted to make her loyal to kind of support that. So you could play around with, your, with her traits if you wanted to. You could make her outgoing but again I think that kind of conflicts with her being a bit shy from The Sims 2. So there you have it. That's Angela's personality in a nutshell. Now her hair, I love her hair so very much. It is a custom hair by Rusty and it is called the Kate Hair. I forget what number IX is. It doesn't matter because if you're going to go look this up or if you click the link down below you're just going to have it available to you. <laughs> Is it six? Is that, is that what it is? I don't remember. Don't come for me. But it's a beautiful hair, and I think it was fairly reminiscent of what the hair was in The Sims 2, which was a hair that I used all the time. You could be looking at this hair by Rusty Sims down here, which I don't know the name of, but it's almost a bit too... Is it actually? Am I lying? That actually... Hold on. Uh, is that actually perfect? Is that perfect? Am I about to make that change? No, I don't want to make that change. I'm going to keep this hair. I'm going to keep this one right here. I like this one. I think it looks a little, it has like an air of innocence to it, which I believe Angela fully embodies. So we're going to keep that one. So if you want to download that, you absolutely can. Again, we have the same skin detail default and she is wearing the same lipstick as Mary Sue, which again is the Madison lipstick by Cryptic Sim. I was itching to get to Lilith. I am obsessed with Lilith. She was probably one of my favorite Sims in The Sims 2. And I honestly, I'm biased, but I love my version of her in The Sims 4. So this is Lilith Pleasant in The Sims 2. She also has red hair and green eyes. She's an Aquarius, of course. Her and Angela are twins. Same astrological and or zodiac sign. Are those kind of the same things? I, I don't know now. Now here's the catch though. She has the popularity aspiration just like Angela, which I find very interesting because I don't think she has the best reputation. And when it comes to her pop or not her popularity, her personality, she's reasonably serious. She's pretty grouchy and she's very sloppy and shy, but she is very active. So maybe she's a bit envious of Angela who maybe has an easier time making friends and kind of fitting in. Now, this is a bit difficult because in The Sims 4 version that shipped with Discovery University, again, that one, not the earlier one, um, she has the loner trait, she's a kleptomaniac, a slob, and she wants to be a public enemy, which also makes her dastardly. And she's majoring in villainy at Foxbury. That doesn't really, I think, fit Lilith. I, I carried it over into The Sims 4 originally, but I actually think that she wants to be the friend of the world. And unfortunately, it's going to be an aspiration that's really difficult for her to achieve. And I also don't want her to be a klepto. I don't see that as her. I don't think she wants to be dastardly. I think that she's getting into some trouble maybe as a teen, but perhaps that won't translate when she's an adult. I don't really know. But since she is sloppy and shy and active and kind of grouchy, maybe she's a slob and she's mean. Maybe she's just not very nice. Or, ooh, actually, why don't we do hot-headed? I think that makes more sense. They're easy to, they're easy to anger. I, I think that that kind of works. So we're going to make her angry and a slob, but she also wants to be the front of the world. She wants to fit in. It's a popularity aspiration. I think, I think that's kind of funny. I, I, I like that. Now her hair, everybody was inquiring about her hair. It is so gorgeous. It has kind of this ombre detail at the top and with the red swatch of the hair, it's dark. 
I love it. So this hair is by Daylife Sims. It is the Xtina hair. Now there are two versions of this and I have both of them. This one is the non ombre version and this one's the ombre version. So they are two separate packages that you would have to download if you wanted them, but I love the ombre version. Again, it matches perfectly with her style. All of her makeup is uh, from in-game and various packs. A lot of her stuff is from the what is that? What is that kit called? Like the goth revival kit? I don't remember. Um, and again, she has the default skin details that I put on all my Sims, but her look is like, cause in the Sims 2, she had a black skirt and then she had kind of like this leather top and a choker and stuff. And actually now that I'm saying that, let me look at the necklaces. Cause didn't we get, didn't we get like a choker or something with the goth revival? Pa Ooh. Oh, it's a bit hard. That's a bit, it's a bit hard. Maybe this, maybe this is kind of nice. I don't know what symbol this is. Hold on, let me go look. It might be, it might actually be that kit. The Grunge Revival, my bad. <laughs> the Grunge Revival kit. And we also have the Goth Galore kit. I was mixing the two up. We have a lot of kits, sorry. So this uh, necklace that I'm gonna put on her is from the Grunge Revival kit. I like that a little bit more. It's got the little lock on it and the thicker chain. That's kind of nice. And then she's got rings, I think, from the Goth Galore kit. It's just perfect, these boots and the tights and the t-shirt. I love, I love Lilith. I really, really do. I love her a lot. So everyone, that is the Pleasant family that I recreated from The Sims 2 to The Sims 4. As I mentioned, all of the custom content that I listed, specifically the hairs and whatnot, will be linked down below for you. And however I make this family available to you, whether it be on the gallery or a zip file to download, which includes all of their custom content, they will be available to you in some capacity if you would like to play with them. I will assign their other outfit categories before doing that. And I can't wait to do more videos on my recreations from The Sims 2 to The Sims 4 because I have been having so much fun reimagining them. I haven't played with any of them, but maybe that can happen in the future. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this one. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts and I will catch you next time I post a video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.